Back when the first generation Ryzen chips launched last year, we saw a lot of people talking about how much the memory speed affects how fast the processor runs, and we saw a few benchmarks back then with those older chips. But now that the second generation both platform and chips have been launched, I wanted to see how much of a difference it really makes, and especially now that Ryzen seems to be a lot more stable with higher clocked memory, how much does that actually make a difference? In this video, I'm using the Ryzen 2700X on a Gigabyte X470 Gaming 7 Wi-Fi board with the G-Skill Sniper memory that I was provided with my press kit effectively for the 27 and 2600X's launch. Uh, that is a 3400 MHz kit, and I'm gonna be running it at kind of the extremes, the, the default 2133 speed that it will auto set to if you don't manually set it to 3400 in your BIOS, and then obviously the 3400 to see how much of an effect it has. Now I am happy to say that even the older 1800X with BIOS updates on the Gigabyte uh, X370 Gaming 5 uh, seem to support 3400 MHz RAM with no problems, which is a big difference considering that my current 1700X rig without BIOS updates seems to only support 21, uh, 2800 MHz, so that's kind of a big difference here, um, but with the newer chip they seem to be even supporting higher than 3400 MHz, which is pretty impressive. Now I ran a fair few both synthetic and actual gaming tests for this video, so I have uh, synthetic tests including Cinebench single-threaded and multi-threaded, also things like a 3 Mark Fire Strikes physics number and our physics score, and also Asus Realbench. And then in terms of the gaming results, I used GTA 5, um, PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, CSGO, and Fortnite. Uh, those were all actually ran with five minute benchmarks and actually multiple five minute benchmarks that are then average. So in theory, the margin for error here in terms of the FPS number specifically is actually relatively small. So without further ado, let's take a look at the results. Now the, the kind of baseline for this is actually the Cinebench single threaded results. That's only 1% difference. And honestly, that's probably within margin of error. You're looking at a slight decrease here, and uh, hypothetically that could also just be purely because of the RAM speed itself not being able to feed the cores, uh, the core fast enough that it's using to, to do that, that process. Where it gets interesting is in the uh, multi-threaded application, and that's actually 3.5% slower, which is actually a relatively significant uh, performance degradation in comparison to, to the, the you know, higher speed RAM. And what's interesting is that that actually carries on the 3.5-ish percent performance difference into 3D Mark Fire Strike, where again it's a 3.4 percent difference, meaning that it's actually potentially much more to do with the, the the Infinity Fabric and the design of the processor rather than just straight up the RAM speed. Where this gets interesting is where you look at the ASUS Realbench number. This was 8 percent difference. That's very clearly much more than margin of error when it comes to these sorts of scores and all of the individual scores, let alone just the system score, which is what the, the difference is based on, uh, were significantly lower. Uh, there was a few that were less affected, but even the OpenCL, which does somewhat rely on the graphics card, uh, that was also affected negatively with the slower speed RAM, which is kind of interesting to see. When it comes to the gaming numbers, starting with Fortnite, this is where it's also really pretty interesting. There was a 6% performance difference, so you're looking at 150 FPS to 140 40. Now, for most people, that's probably not a massive deal, but the fact that your RAM speed, especially if you bought RAM that does run at, say, 3400, 3200, or 3000 mega, or something like that, you're looking at potentially getting an extra 6% performance just from setting that, you know, RAM up how it should be ran. So, that's pretty... Pretty impressive. In player announced Battlegrounds, it's pretty similar at 6.4%, so you're going from 78 to 73 with the slower RAM. Now, of course, that's not a massive difference, but when you are looking at those smaller numbers, every FPS does count a little bit more, and therefore it's still a slightly higher percentage than Fortnite, and you might end up noticing it slightly, but it depends on your settings and your system. In CSGO, this was actually a pretty dramatic difference. You're looking at a 15% performance difference going from 256 FPS to 217. That's a pretty big delta. This was, again, as I mentioned, multiple five minute benchmarks that were then average. So in theory, this is a replicatable result and that's a pretty big difference that you may actually notice uh, depending on, again, your current setup. And finally, GTA 5 is actually the biggest difference here at 17%. 
Now it's not technically as big of a physical difference uh, because it's 122 to 101 FPS, but especially if you're running at you know that sort of 144 hz monitor setup, 122 average to 101 average is potentially noticeable, and that's potentially a pretty big gameplay difference for just setting your RAM to the right speed. And of course, this doesn't necessarily directly factor into if you've purchased say 2400 or 2600 megahertz RAM and that kind of thing, but it's definitely for those of you who have purchased you know relatively high end or at least high speed RAM and you haven't set it up properly yet, definitely go do it if you have a Ryzen chip. Now, do I recommend that you go out and buy the highest speed RAM that you physically can run with your Ryzen chip? Well, generally speaking, yes. It's effectively a slight performance boost depending on what you're doing. You're looking at anywhere from 1% in the single threaded workloads to 17% in some gaming workloads which is kind of crazy, and also, uh, obviously, the, the pricing differences, especially with the, the pricing of RAM currently, uh, does mean that it may be more expensive for you, uh, like a good bit more expensive to go with that higher clocked RAM, and I would understand if you didn't go with that, but just bear in mind that it is a potential source of extra FPS that you wouldn't normally necessarily consider. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you have a Ryzen system and you're regretting buying that 2133 value RAM, or do you, you know, not really care? Do you have an Intel system? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. If you found this video useful, feel free to support the channel in the links in the description down below. There's a Patreon link where you can support you directly, or you can check out, you know, the, the merch if you want a nice t-shirt, or also stuff like the Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links, which massively helped me out, and I genuinely thank anyone who uses them, because it genuinely helps me pay for my rent and that sort of stuff, so thank you to you guys. Um, if you, again, did find the video useful and you want to see more videos like this, then check out the subscribe button and the, the bell notification icon thing um, which apparently is necessary to actually be properly subscribed now but hey whatever uh, there are some other videos over here for you to check out and otherwise that's pretty much it if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below and i'll try and get back to you as soon as i can and otherwise thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video